Hi, today I'm going to show you how to rebuild an HP LaserJet 4, 4 Plus, or a 5 Fuser. Um, it's, it's not really a technical repair. It does take a, a approximately around 10 minutes. Um, but it's a, a repair that you can do uh, um, for under $20. Um, there's a lot of companies on the internet that sell these rollers. And on the HP 4, 4 Plus, and the 5, usually with the fusers, it's uh, all you need to buy is the upper fuser roller. Uh, let's get started. This is a 4 plus fuser. Works in the 4 plus or the 5. First thing you want to do is remove the two clips that hold down the plastic cover. And you do that with a flat blade. And, the, and you press down on them and, and you kind of work them off. There's no real uh, way of doing this. There's also a secondary or a third clip that's built right in the uh, right in the plastic right over here. And you want to kind of press in on it and pull it off. Um, these clips get very brittle uh, because of the heat and over the age of the printer and the clips will break and if they do you know it, it's really not a huge thing um, there are companies that sell little cover plates and you can buy all sorts of like little replacement parts let's take off the two screws now since we've exposed the front of the fuser and um, these screws are part of the, uh, the halogen lamp and um, give yourself a little work area and let's uh, unravel these uh, wiring harnesses in their entirety and just set them to the side. Also there's a little white male-female plug. You want to undo that and again untrack the wiring harness in its entirety and because we want to remove these end caps. That's our goal. Remove the end caps. Okay, there's one last uh, little wiring harness that we have to unplug. It's one wire and it's on the gear side and I like to get in there with a, uh, a needle nose on one side, pull the, uh, pull the wire out a little bit and then grab the other side with another pair of needle nose and then pull it. Comes right off. And again, just kind of separate it. Okay, on each of the end caps there's always two screws. One larger one with a washer and one smaller one. Usually the smaller one always goes where the uh, copper contact is. I find a lot of these fusers, uh, this is an old fuser, but we used to get a lot of them in where companies prior to us would uh, you know, use all sorts of different screws going back and forth. Um, and just try to keep an idea of where your screws went. This, uh, this core, of course, it's, it's, it, it's been around for a while. And I've, uh, I've got another fuser core that's already broken down. I, I try to keep my videos uh, around two minutes. And um, uh, this video is going to be a little longer, so I try to speed things up if I can. Um, again, two screws on the other end cap, one in the copper contact, one in the plastic. And remember, our goal is to remove the end caps. We want to expose the fuser, or the lamp. Okay, we can remove one of the end caps. And just be careful with it. Um, and we can remove the other one, which is just kind of falling apart. Don't worry about the gears. I'll, I'll show you how those go back on. Um, there's two gears, one plastic one and one steel one. The steel one's got a brass insert. And I'm going to walk you through putting a little lubricating oil on that, because that's a real common gear for uh, uh, seizing and getting real gummy. Um, at this point in time, you can pull the lamp out of its socket, and you can see it. Uh, the, the industry has always known you don't want to touch your fingers or on, the, on these lamps. The oils from your fingers can actually uh, uh, create a problem with because of the heat that these uh, lamps produce. So put it somewhere safe, out of the way. And then at this point in time, um, you can turn the fuser around, and you're going to notice on one side of the upper fuser roller, there's a uh, grounding contact and it just comes right off and we're going to want to put that back on. And there's also um, uh, a clip that we're going to want to remove. And, uh, but we can do the gear side first and, um, and we can pull the roller out without removing the other gear or the other clip. Um, so I like, to, uh, I like to use needle nose on removing these, uh, these sur clips. Um, they can be kind of difficult, but you can see this one came right off. And there's a notch in the fuser roller that these clips will actually go into. And pull off the gear, turn the fuser around, and now you can pull this, this uh, roller right out of its socket. This is a uh, pressure release arm, and you can just lay it back in its socket. It goes around the, uh, it goes around the bushing, like that. Sometimes they come off, sometimes they don't. Okay, the roller's out. Um, I'm going to go to my other core now because it's going to speed things up. Um, 
for me at least. And um, this core is the same thing that we just had before. It was all taken apart. Um, I don't like in my videos to recreate things or, or set things up so it's easier. I like to work just like you're working. So if I have a problem on the way through and you, you see me struggle, it's the same thing you're going to go through. And remember, um, things sometimes just don't go your way. And, and uh, just take your time with it. Um, on the two shafts where the metal gear goes, you want to put a little lubricating oil on it and clean this one down. Don't use anything flammable because that lamp gets so hot. Uh, I'm sure if it was an extremely flammable product that you put on there, you could be at risk of, uh, you know, maybe a possible fire. I've never seen it, but I guess anything's possible. Okay, at this point in time, you'll take your replacement roller, use one of the clips. You only have two of them. Use the non-gear side to put the clip back in its socket, and there's two notches in it. You're going to use the one closest to the roller. On the other side, the gear side, I'll, I'll reference the gear side, but that's where the notch is, and that's where the gear goes. So at this point in time, we're going to reinstall the upper fuser roller. On the fusers, there's a couple little clips, one on each side, right here where my finger is. And we're going to want to push those up on both sides. And what that's done is that just gave me some room now, because we have a thermostat and a thermal fuse, and I don't want to get this roller caught on it when we push it through. Also, the lower pressure roller has got big springs on it, and we're going to want to reach our hand in there when we're reinserting this roller and push down on that lower roller. You can see the springs moving on this one down and up. So let's go ahead and reinstall this roller. We're going to start with the uh, non-gear side in our hand, and we're going to slide it right through. And I'm always in a uh, situation where I'm trying to uh, do this without... Uh, uh, in an awkward situation so you can just get, kind of get a good view of what's going on. I like to reach my hand through on the on the other side and uh, kind of help help the roller through the rest of its journey. And again, keep in mind your goal was is not to, uh, you don't want to scratch the new Teflon roller. And there you go. And now you can press down on that lid again and get those these two little clips to go back in their socket. We we removed those uh, and lifted it up because that gave us some more room to work with. Go ahead and reinstall your gear. Uh, one side of it's got a little, like a little oval cut out, the other side's flat. Re reinstall the oval side first. And go ahead and put one of your clips back into place. Only two clips on this, one on each side. Okay, that's it. Put it back in its place. Um, on the opposing side, let's put in the grounding contact. And there you go. Sometimes those little clips get bent. You can just take a flat blade and rebend them. I guess if the uh, if worst case scenario, if it broke right off, you could still go ahead and just leave that off and, and use it. I wouldn't uh, recommend it, but you know if you if you don't have other parts laying around, of course you you could. Um, this unit's already been cleaned, lubricated, and go ahead and put the gear back on and put the other plastic gear back on. All gears touch each other. And now we can reinstall the lamp. Simply slide the lamp through the hole. Again, be careful with it. Now just kind of lay it there. Now we're going to want to reinstall the end cap. These can be more frustrating than anything. Um, and, uh, and I like to uh, make sure that the white wire on the inside of the end cap, um, that's where the end of the halogen bulb will actually lock into place. So you're kind of just going to set up. 